There are new GT3 cars coming to R Factor 2, and that means there will be a balance of performance update to the remaining GT3 pack. Stay with me for the next 20 or something minutes. Hi guys, uh, welcome to another review video here at On Wheels TV. This one is fully dedicated to the GT3 content um, currently available on our Factor 2 while we don't get news and two new cars. But before I start my long approach, uh, please subscribe to the channel in order to be up to date with, um, with my videos, my comments and my contents. So as I was mentioning, since the um, latest roadmap released we know that there are two uh, gt3 new cars arriving soon to our factor 2 we have been waiting for quite some time for these new cars um, I, i'm pretty sure that studio 397 is getting everything ready but uh, we know that uh, when these new cars uh, become available in a dlc uh, there will be an update uh, with a new balance of performance to all the gt3 cars available in the sim so that is enough reason uh, for me to, to bring to you guys this video with just my personal approach as um, content host at on wheels TV and uh, with my view uh, a long one um, I hope you can stay till the end of the video uh, a long one about this um, about this content so currently our factor 2 has uh, a number a significant number of GT3 cars available they were released in uh, three different DLC uh, packs and we are or I am going to approach them now um, in the following minutes uh, with a um, with a short uh, comment on each of the cars almost all the cars are are brought to this um, comment of mind with the exception of one of the two Audi R8 cars because they are basically almost the same car it's just a, a new release from the um, from the, the the same model but with a new um, ear release with some um, with some evolutions in the car but I, I thought it would it would not be necessary necessary to bring both of them to the video but um, I'll just be uh, addressing each of the cars uh, what I think of them in terms of performance where I think they should improve um, and um, what I'm expecting from this uh, from this new um, GT3 content overall once the the two new cars are here and all of them are balanced to perform basically almost the same if not exactly the same although performing exactly the same is uh, very unlikely and difficult but hopefully they can um, perform uh, in a good way so that people can choose their car depending on the on, the, on their favorite gt3 model um, i know that some people think that um, content gt3 content is better um, in a sim compared to another to, 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 to other sims I know that nowadays Assetto Corsa Competizione has um, has been um, stated has the benchmark in terms of GT3 content because they have official licenses from basically all the manufacturers and all the cars um, but I think that R Factor 2 continues being the, um, the benchmark in terms of, uh, of the physics at least in my opinion and therefore I'm approaching this uh, GT3 content um, Although I know that at the moment um, Studio 397 does not have the full licensing to uh, be competitive with all the brands um, that Assetto Corsa Competizione has available. Anyway, um, taking into account uh, the cars that are available at this moment in the sim, I start my approach 
with each one of them. And I start with this one, the Radical. This is a car that um, most of the, or a, a lot of people think that should not be in this GT3 pack. Basically, this car joined uh, a couple of races, if, if that much, in terms of the international GT Open. And therefore, um, many people find it strange to be here in this GT3 uh, or in one of the, the GT3 DLCs available and in all uh, be, to be a part of the GT3 cars in the sim. Anyway. The car is performant, the car is different in terms of the driving, the car just like every Radical um, available in the sim because they are all officially licensed, um, the car is fantastic to drive, um, it's different, it's more of a prototype than a GT3, uh, but the balance of performance suits him, so it has more or less the same performance as the other cars. Um, I, I used the, basically the default setup uh, with all the cars and I drove all of them in Silverstone and uh, with all the cars I chose to use the medium tire so that um all the cars would be in the same uh, conditions uh, they all uh, went to the track at the same time the, the the time was set up to be the same for all the cars and I drove each one of them and basically all the cars performed uh, in the time frame of um, six uh, tenths of a second um, give or take so all in all I found all the cars to be balanced in terms of performance uh, the current balance of performance which is soon to be updated is good and and this car performs uh, really well um, so it's it's a good choice um, but it will need to be uh, good in terms of setting up this car which is not easy anyway this is a very good car for the GT3 content available in the sim then we have the Porsche the Porsche 911 uh, GT3 um, which is one of my favorite cars in this in in all these uh, gt3 available um, force feedback is fantastic you do feel um, you are driving a porsche you do feel the masses or, or the weight of the car the the mass transfer of the car throughout a lap um, so basically this is a well accomplished car in terms of the physics and in terms of the performance um, and it does perform on the same level or um, on a on an equitative level compared to all the others. Um, it is one of my favorite cars. It is, it is one of the most accomplished uh, virtual simulations from all the GT3 cars present uh, in the Studio 397 content for R Factor 2. Yeah. Although, um, if we compare, compare it with reality, it's an old GT3 car, so as you all probably know, or at least most of you, uh, Porsche has already developed a new version of the GT3, of the 911 GT3. Um, and you have that available, for instance, in Assetto Corsa Competizione. So it would be good um, if Studio 397 could update or could upgrade this car um, because, at least in my opinion, it's always good when you, we are trying to um, um, virtually um, drive the cars that nowadays compete in reality. It would be good to have cars from the same generation competing with each other, even in a sim. And um, it, Although it's interesting to see this car competing with cars such as the McLaren 720S GT3, uh, the, the current competitor of the 720S is the new GT3 car, so this is um, an old model. Even so, uh, the car is fantastic to drive, it's performant just like all the other brands involved in the sim, and um, its uh, physics is uh, very good in my opinion. Then we have the Mercedes, and well, this is um, this is a minus, um, and I'll, I'm being very very honest with you in the in the in my comment, and I will be very honest uh, when it comes to the Mercedes AMG GT3. In terms of performance, the car um, is performant. Uh, I, I noticed that in terms of the lap times, it was not the fastest car. Um, it was not also the um, the slowest car, so it. It's performant, just like any other of the GT3 cars available 
with uh, or within this um, this GT3 content on our factor 2. However, um, I don't like the, 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 the handling of this car. Uh, the force feedback is poor, in my opinion. Uh, we don't feel the car in the, in the curve, uh, so um, the car just seems too smooth uh, in corners. Uh, we do feel the, the car when he, when he touches the curbs and um, in different types of surfaces on track, we do feel that. But then the, the force feedback of the car, it's almost like if it were neutral uh, in corners so this is a heavy car this is a car that is officially available in several sim racing platforms and I'm specifically talking about the GT3 car it's it's maybe the most overwhelming presence of a GT3 car in all sim racing platforms because basically I think it is available in almost all of them um, however on our factor 2 it has in my honest opinion poor physics um, and I surely would like that Studio 397 could pay attention to this um, I'm not talking about performance the car in terms of balance of performance is competitive with all the others uh, the cars are in fact competitive uh, between themselves but in terms of the physics this is a poor car and uh, in my opinion not a fair assessment of what the GT3 car is in reality so I surely hope they can do that because uh, the Mercedes is a brand and a car, this GT3, a car that I like, but not in this current physics on our Factor 2. Well, then we have the McLaren, and in terms of GT3 offering um, by McLaren on our Factor 2, we have two options. So we have this one that you are already watching in the video, which is the McLaren 650S GT3. Um, This car is, uh, well, I would say tricky on, in terms of the handling. Um, it's not the easiest car to set up. Uh, we notice um, it has poor performance when compared with the other McLaren um, available in terms of GT3 content on our Factor 2, which is the 720S or the 720S that you will see next. Um, so. If I were to compare this with reality, I would say that the Studio 397 approach in terms of both GT3 cars is, is uh, coherent and good because um, the, the 650S is less performant than the 720. Um, I know this car is also inter included in terms of the GT3 content, therefore is contemplated in all balance of performances, uh, in all, in every time that Studio 397 does a balance of performance of the GT3 cars. However, um, I did notice that I was not able to perform on the same level as I was with the uh, 720s and with uh, basically almost all other cars so if this in reality is slower than the 720 well then it makes sense because it's supposed to be because this is an older model anyway in terms of sim racing this should be different and this car in uh, ideal conditions should perform on the same on the same level as the others um, the physics is good the handling is well i i did not adapt um, very well to the driving of this car but th maybe that's just me um, but anyway this is another good choice in terms of gt3 content on our factor 2. and then in terms of mclaren the offering is completed uh, with the McLaren 720S GT3, this one, this beauty you are watching. And, um, well, first of all, in terms of balance of performance, uh, it's always tricky to... Tricky. <laughs> it's always tricky to... Um, achieve the perfect balance of performance so there there will always be cars that perform better, better than others, maybe depending on the track. Uh, or maybe um, in all there are some that may perform better than others. Definitely the 720S, to my knowledge, is one of those cars. So this car is very performant. I think it, it was uh, the one with which I lapped fastest here in this uh, test, in this, in this track. Um, 
maybe like um, no it's not the fastest it was the second fastest yeah the fastest i'll let you know later um but it, it was definitely among the fastest cars um very nice to drive um different in terms of the approach but in in, in that matter or to that matter all the cars are, are fantastic with the exception of the mercedes because you definitely did feel the different masses uh, depending on the cars this car you, you feel that is very fast um, you feel that is um, different when you approach corner entry compared to other cars but all the cars um, are very performant and is th this is definitely one of the most performant so it, the physics on this on these gt3 cars is so accurate and good that you do feel the difference on track um, and i was using the same uh, profile in my direct drive wheel for all the cars so that i could notice the difference in the sim and i definitely did notice significant differences in the handling of all the cars all of them really good with the exception of the of the mercedes that i already mentioned earlier this is very performant so one of the first one of the first gt3 cars to be available in a pack was this the corvette c7r so being a fan of the vet of the vets as i am yeah definitely am a fan of these of this brand this was a car that i always felt curious and once it arrived it was almost all the time one of my favorites and at least until i tried the porsche anyway very good in terms of the physics very good in terms of the sound um, and I do think that basically almost all the cars are pretty accurate in terms of the sounds um, so the handling of this car is fantastic you feel that this car is much more of a muscle car than a GT than a GT car you feel the weight braking you feel the weight on corner entry you do feel that the car is heavy it takes its time to to be perfect on exit but then once you get the power down you feel the, the the strength of this of this engine so fantastic and in terms of the performance it is performant like all the other cars so basically in terms of what of um, what balance of performance is concerned in this in this um, current standing in this current situation on R Factor 2, the balance of performance is good. So I'm I'm pretty sure that when they uh, update it before or at the time uh, of the arrival of the other two cars, which are, uh, as you all know, uh, the new Bentley and uh, the Ferrari, um, the performance of these cars will be all uh, good because on that matter studio 397 has been working well although there will be always some cars performing a bit better than others but uh, good drivers will be able to extract the, the difference uh, that will make that on their on their hand some car may perform better anyway the corvette is fantastic and one of my favorites in all these gt3 cars available and then we have the BMW, the BMW M6 GT3. This car is uh, a blast to drive, yeah. This was the car with which, believe it or not, I was the fastest. Uh, so I performed the best lap time with this car. I'm not going to mention what my lap time was, because it's... Uh, it's pretty obvious that I was not using uh, adjusted setups. I was uh, lapping with the medium tire. So uh, my lap times were not uh, perfect. And also I'm not, um, the R Factor 2 is not the sim where I practice and race the most nowadays. And this is a very specific sim on which your, your driving should be very specific, very determined and at this moment i don't have the pace to to be competitive on this sim anyway with what i did in all the cars this car felt the heaviest felt the, i needed more time to adjust to the driving of this car but once you adjust, you adjust once you adjust to to where you should brake with this car where you should put it um, on, on corner entry how you should manage the throttle 
uh, and the, 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 the fantastic power of this engine, uh, this car will be very performant and I do very, very much like to drive this car. It was the fastest, fastest but slightly fastest. So in terms of the balance of performance, I would not say that this car has an advantage. Um, but well, it's a car that highlights the quality physics of the sim and the quality physics there that are implemented in the GT3 cars, in almost all GT3 cars, because it shows how you feel this car so different on, on, on the handling, uh, on the weight transfer. So all in all, this car feels different than all the others and all the cars feel different between themselves. So um, hats off to the, to the guys from Studio 397. This is one of my favorite cars. And then we have the Bentley, soon to be, well, it, it's not going to be replaced, I think, uh, for the new car, but people, once they have the new Bentley, uh, the new Bentley Continental GT3, uh, this car will struggle with the same problem as the McLaren 650S, which is people don't choose it. Most of the people because because there is a new and there's a newer model. There's the newest model available, and that's what people will pick to race. Anyway, this is also one of my favorite cars. It's the one with the um, with the wheel on the right. Uh, which already makes it uh, unique in terms of this uh, of all these GT3 cars available but then the engine sound the physics the handling of the car the performance how it suits almost every track although it's very heavy although it has generous dimensions um, it's it's like the Corvette more of a muscle car and um, its volume seems to be even bigger like the BMW for instance but it's so good um, the handling of this car this car feels so good to drive um, especially in Silverstone um, but also in other tracks I just brought Silverstone to the video but I've been driving with these cars on several tracks so this is uh, a blast and um, I hope the, the new the new Bentley Continental GT3 soon to be released is better than this because um, this is already such a fun car to drive. It's it's so it's so so it's, it's so nice to drive this car. I like it so much that I, I I'm very very curious about the new Bentley. So one of my favorites, very performant. Um, still able to compete on a very good level in uh, R Factor 2 sim racing competitions or leagues. Um, definitely one of the greatest GT3 cars in my opinion. And then there's the Audi R8 LMS GT3 and this model, we have two options for this car in the sim, in terms of GT3. Uh, this is the most recent one. The, the other one is basically the, the earlier version, but the car is basically almost the same. Um, it has some minor changes on the outside. Um, and therefore, I, ch I chose to only use one uh, because um, there wouldn't be any significant difference to mention and it would make the video even bigger than what it is. But one of the latest generation cars available in terms of GT3 um, and a good example on how uh, Studio, 390, Studio 397 if given the opportunity should upgrade also cars such as the Porsche such as the Mercedes um, and just to mention a few in terms of what they currently have uh, in the GT3 packs but this is also a very good car, good physics, fantastic to drive, great sound in the engine. The Audi is, is just like any other of, this, of these brand cars present in, in, in terms of content, is different on track. Um, it has a different approach, it's very balanced, the physics is fantastic in the sim. And, um, and this is one of the most used cars, so it's definitely among the community's favorites um, when it comes to racing GT3. And um, and I do understand why because the car is uh, the handling is fantastic, 
the car suits basically almost every track um, its performance so it's very well uh, represented in terms of balance of performance and therefore uh, it's one of the community's favorites and one of the most uh, well accomplished cars uh, in the sim it's it's Audi is very well represented on our factor 2 with this car um, and yeah it's another very good example on how studio 397 is competent uh, in terms of GT3 content just like it's the case with the Aston Martin Vantage GT3 so this car was released basically at the same time they released the GT version of the of the car so now we just in this video we just focus on the GT3 um, and this is uh, yeah it's also in the in the group of favorites of mine yeah uh, i'm a fan of aston martin and this car is very well um is very well produced for the sim it's performant it's one of the, the community's favorites also um and the sound is fabulous the feel of the car on track is fantastic basically very good on almost every track at least in every track i drove it so far i really enjoyed driving this car so if i were to compete in gt3 i would have to pick maybe from three four brands available in the sim but that's definitely this is um, this would be one of them um, the physics of the car is good um, you do feel when driving this car that it's it's a very compact GT car um, it's basically working on fast sections on technical sections it's very well balanced um, and um, yeah and it, it really works in terms of the lap times it was one of the fastest and I, I would say that basically all the latest generation cars are among the fastest although all the cars are very well balanced in terms of performance when it comes to all GT3 content in the sim so um, because this is the latest the last car in the video I would say that uh, the community should be curious about the new cars I hope then they don't take too long to arrive I'm pretty sure that studio 397 is pretty silent at the moment because they are just focused in finishing the, the, the two cars and releasing them and I'm pretty sure that in terms of GT3 they will be as good as the rest of the pack guys once again before we finish the video please subscribe to the channel help on wheels tv grow in terms of youtube and um, if you are gt3 users i hope you invest in the new cars arriving thank you for watching